Again, welcome to another math lesson. This time we're looking at the fourth logarithmic laws as we've been looking at the first three. The first one being that if I have a logarithm with any base except zero um, and the input in there is uh, one, then I know b to the power of zero would ev give me one. If my input is equal to my base, then I know it my, my exponent had to have been one and then the last one we looked at was that if I have two logarithms with the same bases okay and I'm adding them together same base but the input can be different can be the same doesn't matter okay then what to, to solve this all I need to do is multiply the interiors so I can say log of bx times y. This would be kind of to simplify it if we go in this direction and maybe sometimes I need to expand it. There can be uh, cases where I need to expand it and that would be in the other direction. We looked at the proof in the previous video. If you haven't seen that please go and have a look. That's that's quite cool. So now let's have a look at logarithmic law 4. Very similar to this one. That one simply says that if I have a logarithm with any base and an interior and from it I'm subtracting another logarithm with the same base maybe a different interior then what I can do well what do you think well I can divide the interiors keep the base the same but the interiors gets divided x divided by y now it's very important here that the term that that has the negative in front becomes the denominator and the one that was positive becomes a numerator okay so that that's very important don't turn those two around uh, I've not really seen students do that you seem to get that okay let's look at the proof though let's look at the proof obviously this is true in both directions if I have a logarithm and the interior is a fraction I can separate it over into two logarithms where the one is um, uh, has a positive in front of it and the one the denominator gets a negative in front of it so let's do it the same way we did before let's say okay log asks the base the base what exponent must we give you to get x and he would answer well give me n whatever that answer is let's call it n and uh, then we ask well log asks y sorry b uh, what exponent must we give you to get y now whatever that answer is let's call that answer m okay and now the question would be well log of b what value must we give you what exponent must we give you to get x divided by y and we want to go and figure out what value must we give it to get x divided by y so let's again look at um, at this in its exponential expression so ex the, this is the logarithmic expression exponentially it would be b to the power of n is equal to x and this second one would be b to the power of m is equal to y now we want to know what will happen with x divided by y so let's try and get an an exponential expression for x divided by y and convert our exponential expression into a logarithmic expression how would we do that well x divided by y would equal and we know x is b to the power of n and y if we replace y we get b to the power of m but we know from our exponential laws that when we have bases that are being subtracted we are allowed to sorry uh, bases that are being divided we are allowed to subtract the exponents so this becomes b to the power of n minus m good so in this one we're asking b what exponent must we give you to get x divided by y and here we see b with an exponent of n minus m gives me x over y so here we can see the answer is clearly what exponent must we give him n minus m where n was the exponent we could give b to get x and m was the exponent we could give b to get y okay but now n is equal to 
Look there. We can replace n with this expression because they are equal. They're the same thing. Whether I use this one or that one, it doesn't matter. They're equal. So in this expression, we can now write log of b x over y is equal to log of b x. So I've replaced the n minus, and now if I replace m with log of b y, log of b y, then I've got exactly the proof I was looking for. This proof. It's now in this direction, but since I've been using equal signs the whole time, equal signs go both ways, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and there we go. If I have a base, a logarithm with a base, and my interior is a fraction, or can be written as a fraction, then I can split it up into two logarithms, with a numerator minus the logarithm with the denominator as an input. Or if I'm subtracting two logarithms, the one with the negative may div uh, the input of the negative may divide the input of the positive. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Okay, let me think up an example. Let's take log log itself of let's say 500 minus log of 50 okay well remember we said that if we don't write a base it means it's base 10 so what exponent must we give 10 10 to the power of what can give you 500 Okay. To be honest, I, I can't immediately think of what exponent you must, must give, but that's not important. The important thing is that I, if, if you look into this question just a little bit further, then you see, okay, there's a, these two get subtracted. So I am allowed to say 500 divided by 50, which gives me 10. And I know what log of 10 would be. Okay, because there's a little 10. If my base and my input's the same, I know the answer is 1. Okay, because 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10. So, uh, just for any, if, if I lost any of you, how on earth did you get that 10, you might ask? Well, I simply used this law of mine that said if I'm subtracting two, two logarithms with the same basis, I may divide the inputs. So, I said, well, this is log... 500 divided by 50, the one with the negative becomes denominator. And this now equals, th this interior simplifies, I mean, to 10. And now I've got log 10 of 10, and that answer is equal to 1. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay, well, I'll see you in the next video where we'll do law 3. See you there.